Hey guys and welcome to the first real TTT, that is a Tamiya Thursday talk or just Tamiya talks or a tabletop talk about Tamiya. Now I actually had planned to do a talk about a Tamiya car that I know something about, but plans changed because I just did an unboxing of this in 4K. You can watch it up here in the link. And yeah, just got pretty excited getting this out of the box. So it's been sitting for a box for more than two years right now. I'll get into my personal reasons for that. But it's just nice. It's always nice to see a Tamiya getting out of the box and yeah, start exploring it. So this is gonna be the first Tamiya talk with a car that I don't really know much about. I do know a little, but I hope you also, you maybe you in the comments section can help me explore this item. This is obviously the Tamiya Fast Attack Vehicle FAV Whiskey Buggy. It's a one-tenth scale, which was first released in December 1984 with the number 5846, later changed to 58046. So yeah, it's from the same year as the Grasshopper and Hornet and other interesting cars from that golden era of RC buggies. So the plan is just to talk about the fast attack vehicle of course the difference between a re-release and the original and maybe a difference between the kit version which came in 2011 and then this xp version we'll just talk a bit about xp tamias in general i'm also gonna include some details about the wild one which is the younger brother of the FAV, the civilian version, an upgraded version of this fast attack vehicle. But first of all, an overview of the car. Like I said, it's a one tenth scale. Got an interesting part that the chassis is actually part of the body. So what you see here is actually part of the chassis construction here. Yeah, it got some pretty bouncy pogo sticks here, so no oil filled shocks or no friction shocks, just in the type of similar to the grasshopper and harness here, and then some similar enclosed ones here, pogo sticks, pogo sticks. Then it got trail arms, so there's no double wishbone suspension. It's a two-wheel drive car, rear-wheel drive, so we got the transmission in the rear here. We got a silver can, just a 2710 brushed motor included here in both the kit version, I would imagine, and also this XP version. So this is a thin transmission rear gearbox, kind of reminds me of the Frog and Monster Beetle and all that. And from what I know is that it originally came with some hex drive shafts here, but they have changed it to normal dog bones on these re-releases from 2011 and 2012. So yeah, tray lines and it's of course with the heavy motor and transmission in the back, it's pretty heavy. It's got a full working differential. And it doesn't seem very loose, so it might actually be okay for some off-road runs. Now I had several people asking me about this box, which I showed in the unboxing video. You can see it, it's quite empty. And yeah, and several people complaining a bit about this rubber band. I don't, don't think it looks very good either. 
but you can actually glue this one up or find another thing because this is actually unused so this was previously used for the batteries for the receiver back in the old days but it's left empty the battery compartment is located underneath the car you have to remove these small r clips and then just pop the battery out or battery door out here so it's quite large for its age 1984 i had absolutely no problems fitting my 3600 milliamps per hour NIM battery in here so maybe it's bigger than the original but I think it's exactly the same as the 1984 original one but a good size so no real issues with batteries and I think you can even drill these these plastic bits out and fit a square battery square lipo battery if you want to Pete Wiley suggested that you can drill this one out and get the battery connector inside here hidden. And I think even in the wild one, the younger brother, this section is actually drilled out and larger. But on this one, you either have to solder your connection because you can't get it through here. And then, yeah maybe drill out a larger hole and you can fit the wire inside here overall it's a quite heavy buggy so i think it's gonna make up some for some interesting runs with the pogo stiff sticks and the heavy rear end here quite heavy because everything you see is pretty much hard plastic or metal bits so no polycarbonate bodies and we also got all the details with the driver and the little machine gun. But a quite heavy buggy and it's gonna be interesting running it, I think. I think it's gonna be pretty fast because if I got the specifications right, it's geared to 1.7 or 1.9. And depending on your choice of opinion, I actually haven't opened up this you can see it here you got a option of a high 18 tooth and a low 15 tooth i haven't opened it but i suspect there's an 15 tooth pinion in here and i think i also got an 18 tooth pinion with the buggy in the box you got the free spinning front wheels and as many of you have noticed definitely not ball raced so i suspect like all the xp models this whole car is full of bushings and we got the wheels are actually three piece wheels quite similar to the grasshopper hornet style so bead locks and everything and then we got this typical 1984 bomber that you also pretty much get in a lot of other Tamiyas like the Grasshopper and Hornet same style anyway now I'm not gonna go into a discussion whether or not these Tamiya cars especially these classic Tamiya cars should be acquired in an assembly kit version and built yourself so it is what it is and yeah it's a personal preference whether or not you want to buy an assembly kit or get an RTR XB model. I like both of them and I'm just gonna show you some of the things you get when an XB model. XB stands for expert built, factory built by Tamiya themselves and yeah it's pretty much a kit version that's being built in the factory and then fitted with Tamiya electronics and everything. In Japan you're gonna get battery and charger i think but outside japan there's no battery and charger included now the polycarbonate xb models are pretty much expert bodies with absolutely perfect decals and everything and i must say looking at these decals which you can see here they are pretty much perfect too what confuses me sometimes with these hard body xp models is that you never get the actually body painted so 
yeah if you want to paint one yourself in a color or just cover up this ugly looking plastic with a similar color paint I think it's a better option to go for the kit version for this I actually do not mind it not being painted because as I said the chassis is part of the body and everything is pretty much gonna get scratched up real good with this so there's no high body like a monster truck where you can probably protect it a little before you first roll on or roll over anyway now what is painted as you can see is the auxiliary light here a good job with a silver you can of course install your own lights if you want to and then the tail lights here are pretty nice painted too of course the driver is painted and yeah it's not that bad i've seen definitely seen worse paint jobs than this so it's a pretty basic paint up paint job with no details or anything but it's definitely done with a person with a steady hand so these are actually stickers for the sunglasses here driving glasses but it just does the job and makes it look scale so uh, yeah pretty good paint job you can of course apply your own details if you're a master painter so yeah not many details but it does the job as I said, as far as I know, there are no real big changes from the 1984 to the 2011, 2012 versions. Well, the hex drafts have been replaced with dog bones, as I mentioned. I think some of the FRP plates here are a different color. And also some of the metal brackets are a different color. And of course the silver cane looks a bit different. Now what you certainly can complain about in these Tamiya XB models ready to run is the amount of instruction manuals that you get. So pretty much everything is included and also the re-release 2011 build manual. So. The build actually built manual is included here which is already always nice some special xb futures on this and the you must remember this buggy is from 2012 so it's a teu 105 bk 2.4 gigahertz fine spec transmitter here but yeah overall tons of information in different languages japanese french Deutsch, uh, German it's called and of course English which is nice for a Scandinavian like me besides the transmitter you always get at least with the fine spec models a couple of bits for enlarging your trigger here if you want it a bit larger and as the Tamiya says a bit more sensitive but you also get this bit with the rubber band that I showed you, which you need to attach yourself. And yeah, this is an 18 tooth, so it's a high speed pinion option. Now again, I guess all, nearly all Tamiya's come with these alloy pinions and I definitely am not a big fan of these. These wear out very quickly and they leave a mess in the gearbox and can even damage the plastic by all the metal dust getting inside the whole gearbox. So definitely an option which I have to consider is to change this for a steel pinion. And for those who haven't seen it before, this is the fine spec 2.4 gigahertz it used to be an FM radio. I have a lot of these older AM and FM Tamiya radios. Maybe I should do a video in comparison with those someday. But a pretty basic radio. Now you can see it used to include or require eight batteries here. But yeah, for the 2.4 gigahertz, they luckily changed it to 
four AA batteries, but still not included. So we got the FHSS frequency hopping spread spectrum, which makes the connection more secure. In these Wi-Fi days, yeah, on off, and you got the usual trims and reverse. Yeah, so there's definitely a lot you could do with this to get it up to just normal standard. You could change the shocks for some oil fill shocks and you could install some ball bearings, install a steel pinion, maybe get a new and better transmitter. But overall, I think it is what it is. And I think some of the fun with these old ones, the grasshoppers and hornets and the fast attack vehicles and so on is the vintage feeling you get when you run them. Steve from Shin RC also commented on the unboxing video that you could perhaps cover this up with a rubber band so we won't get this clanking of metal to metal. But a lot of mods, I would love to hear what you have done or seen with your FAV or wild one and leave it, please leave it in the comment for the rest of us so we can get some good inspiration. Now we are slowly getting to the end and the more personal stuff, why I have left this in the box for two years. I actually got it on a Black Friday deal. Yeah, somewhere in November, December, two years ago, more than two years ago. And I got a good deal around 800 Danish crowns, so that's perhaps, yeah, around 100 euros and uh, $120, I think. So it's a pretty good deal, $120, $30 for an XB RTR Tamiya. But yeah, why it is left in the box is that I'm really not the greatest fan of the military style buggies or RCs in general. And that's maybe why if I have time someday I will probably maybe change this into a civilian civilian vehicle somehow but maybe I will just leave it like this because what I really want is a wild one. So let's just discuss some of the differences and similarities between a wild one and an FAV. With that being said, I was still, when I got it out of the box, in a general wow state. Whenever I <laughs> unbox an Atomia, I always get a special feeling, no matter what. Now what I know, the differences between an FAV and a wild one is, of course, the general look, the FAV. V is a military style attack vehicle and the, the wild one is a pretty much standard dune buggy civilian. So this is a hard body. The wild one is a polycarbonate body on top here. It's also got a different chassis. It's a pretty similar style, but of course without the, all the FAV styled features here or details here. So you get another chassis and you also of course get some other shocks. So the wild one has the oil field shocks. It's kind of like a civilian upgraded FAV. So a longer travel and different shock uh, towers here in the front. So you of course get some other wheels, some other tires. These are three-piece wheels and you get the one-piece standard buggy tires, white tires with the wild one. Yeah, and of course the driver is just polycarbonate and the body is just polycarbonate for the wild one. That's what I really wanted and maybe someday I'll get a kit and build it. I don't know if they are available right now. One of the things I discovered while unboxing this and going online is the price. So I definitely think the price has gone up with these. Also the XB version of the FH, FAV fast attack vehicle. So maybe they are actually out of production. 
But again, I got a good deal two years ago and I'm gonna enjoy this one in 2021. Anyway, I think that's about it. I probably forgot a whole lot, but leave it, please leave it for the rest of us in the comments. I'm also gonna leave some specification in the description box so you can check them out if interested. But for now, yeah, this is all I got for the XP57828 model, the ready to run version of the fast attack, attack vehicle re-release from 2011. Yeah, so I hope you're having a good hobby time and I will see you on next Thursday, hopefully with a car I know a bit more about. I will see you on next Thursday for another lengthy Tamiya talk. Happy holidays to you all and of course take care.